Hello Interwebs, welcome to uh, Let's Fix Computers or Gadgets or whatever. Um, this is my uh, this is my car's dash cam. It's a cheap Chinese eBay jobby that costs like 20 quid or something like that. Uh, and the battery in it has died. Its internal battery is kaput. Um, so it doesn't, it doesn't start properly um, or very cleanly at all. Uh, and it doesn't save its settings properly because it doesn't have any internal battery to stop it to preserve the settings. Um, now, Full disclosure in advance, full credit to um, uh, Big Clive over at BigClive.com and Big Clive on YouTube, um, who has done the exact repair that I'm about to undertake on basically the same camera, as far as I can tell. Uh, I was watching his channel and I was and I saw this video on it and I was like, huh, I've got one of those and huh, I have exactly the same problem. Um, and so yeah, I'm going to do the same repair. So um, uh, basically we're going to swap the LiPo battery out in this. And um, hopefully I'll be able to put a slightly larger one in there. Um, although uh, I did my best to try and determine what uh, what size was in there, um, and I was under the impression that it has a 150 milliamp hour um, cell in there. So I've bought a 200 milliamp hour cell that should be ever so slightly larger. But the cell that I purchased is actually very teeny tiny, and so I'm I'm not sure or not. I I don't know. This looks really small, but. At the very least, it can't be any worse than what's in there. So let's have a go. I'm going to start off by taking out the screws on the top and the bottom there. And we should be able to then take this thing apart. So let's see what happens. And I should remove the uh, SD card from it as well. Okay, right. So let's try and split this apart. I have to admit, I watched the video quite a few weeks ago and I have not reviewed it before coming back to this, so I'm not going in blind, but I have not refreshed my memory. So if I do a little bit of arming and ahhing, that'll be why. It's not rocket science how this thing goes together though, so... Okay, so that's the back off, and immediately the LCD is just kind of loose in there. So I'm going to disconnect that. How does that locking bar work? Is that a slide out job? It is. There we go. That's the LCD removed. Now the, uh, the lithium cell is behind here, or sorry, the LiPo cell is behind this circuit board. So this main board now needs to come out of it. Uh, we've got the speaker there, which I'm going to just pop out there. Yep, tiny little speaker, which does basically nothing, but fine. Okay, there's the LiPo cell. It is quite small. Oh, it does have protection on it as well. I didn't think it was going to. Let's disconnect this main board from the uh, actual camera module there. Now, this one isn't in nearly as poor condition as Clive's was. Just, uh, just get that off the board. However, it doesn't look very happy. It's a little bit puffy. It's okay though. So let's just see what the voltage on that cell is. Eh. It's absolutely stone dead. Now, uh, this cell does have a protection circuit on it. So it most likely, you see that little circuit board, that's the protection circuit. So most likely that has kicked in to try and protect the cell. So what I'll do, I'm just gonna peel back I'm going to replace this thing anyway because I've got like I've got um, a dozen of these tiny little lipo cells. I bought them in bulk because then they're, they're not expensive from eBay China. You've just got to wait for them to show up in the post. So I bought a bunch of them. So I'm going to replace this anyway, just because um, I'm going to be putting in a slightly bigger cell. We should improve how well this thing works anyway because my car only gets run like once a month or so. Anyway, so let's just see what the actual cell voltage is at. There you go, so we're on 2.89. So the protection circuit on this is kicking in and preventing the cell from being, being discharged. 
However, the fact remains is that the cell shouldn't be flat in the first place. Um, because the cam it, the, it only has to power the quiescent current of the camera to just retain its settings, and it only has to power the whole thing for maybe three seconds um, between starting up and, and starting up and uh, stopping the car engine. Any other time when the camera is on is being powered over the USB port. So this thing shouldn't be this thing should be working just fine anyway. So we'll change it out and that should do the job. I've had this one for quite a couple of years now, I believe. Um, so you know it's 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 done its time. And yeah, I mean that that cell is slightly puffy, so it looks pretty unhealthy. Anyway, okay, I'm gonna warm up the soldering iron and we'll just take those off and we'll remove this thing. And I'm just gonna sort of I'm just going to try and peel this back, see if we can get the actual spec on this cell. I don't think it actually has anything written on it. No, there's no markings on this cell at all. However, based on the size of the cell, we can probably estimate that it's approximately 150 or 200 milliamp hours. So I probably could have put something that is, I probably could have gotten away with a slightly bigger, like 250 or even 300 milliamp hour cell. Um, so yeah, I, I went conservative because I didn't want to buy a load, wait for them to arrive from China only to find that they were the wrong size. But yeah, oh well. So for reference, the cell that I'm fitting, it's a 40-20-30. That's 4.0 millimeters thick, 20 millimeters wide and 30 millimeters tall. So tall, wide, thick. If you're buying a cell that is great, that is 10 mil or greater thick, then they move the decimal point on this one, which is why if I show you another example cell, this guy here is a 10 47 55. So that's 10 millimeters thick, 47 millimeters wide and 55 tall. So that's what those codes mean. And that's why this one is 40 and this one is 10 because this one is 4.0 millimeters and that one is 10 millimeters. So that's what the numbers mean. Anywho, uh, cool, let's get the soldering iron on and uh, desolder that. And we may as well just jump straight in with the new battery. No reason to wait. Ugh. Try not to scrub a positive lead all across the circuit board, that's not ideal. Oh, and it just turned on because it received power. We've got a flashing light there where it's uh, actually got power now. Uh, right, are those leads through hole? They are. And yeah, they've soldered just fine. Soldering iron off. Uh, right, where's the power button on this? So uh, that's the back. And the power button is the far left button. Hold down. And there we go. It's dead. Okay. Right, and this thing is already well wrapped in captain tape, so I'm just gonna position that around the back there. And um, we kinda need a double-sided pad to hold it in place, really, but I think I'm just going to uh, stuff it all in. I'm gonna be a little bit careful as well. Those wires there just got a little bit bent coming out. I'm surprised at that. So let's carefully uh, get that thing reconnected. And now we'll just position that in there. And we're just kind of gonna sit the board on top of that. That hasn't sat in place very well. I might just get a bit of double-sided tape just to stick the cell onto the back of the board again. Or I might just get good with my stuffing skills. I'll tell you what I'm gonna do actually. I'm gonna tape it down. I'm gonna grab the captain tape and just tape it in place. That'll do. It's a very poor job. Just 
I didn't actually cut that properly in the slightest. This is quite terrible. However, I literally just need the battery to not move for a moment. Okay, there we go. Right. So the ports need to go in first because they need to go through those inserts in the case. And I just need to make sure that the cell wires don't clip anything on the way in. I don't want those to get squashed. I'm just going to poke them into the case. And I'm just going to pry the board down. All right, I think that's okay. That seems to be in place. Let's put some screws in it. Right, and that is just going to sit on top. Oh, that power button's not right at all. That's negged. There we go, that, was, that looks good. Click, 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 and click. Okay, it's on, it's in, everything is fine. No, and then I tried to put the screw in and it pushed it out of place again. There we go. Triple check, it's all good. All right, there we go, that's now recording. All right, well that concludes that. As you can hear, this hasn't actually done anything to fix the terrible, terrible audio on this camera, but to be honest, it's only got to hear the screech of tires to do its job. So, uh, yeah, past that, it's all working just fine now. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you all next time. Bye.